making mistakes. Um, but one thing that I do want to put out there is that her death was not an accident. It was not an accident. Um, and before I proceed to say anything within this video, I do want to say that none of what I'm saying, I'm verbalizing it to be true. I don't want any legal action taken against me as far as hearsay goes. Now, a lot of people have it that Kanika Jenkins um, witnessed a death um, that took place um, based upon her brother um, killing someone. Now, it is true that Kanika did witness someone getting killed. Um, and it was actually a young lady um, from Chicago. Bear with me because I'm very nervous about these things that I'm about to say. Um, the person that she witnessed get killed, um, I think her name was Um She was a young lady who was gunned down in the city of Chicago. Uh, she was shot 12 times in the Logan Square area, the same area where Kanika was found. Now, based upon my research, I've been following this case since 2017, since the first ever happened. Um, based upon my research, supposedly Kanika saw that young lady that was shot 12 times get killed, and she went back to Monika and let Monika know that she was the killer of this young lady. Um, being that I'm from Chicago, I won't say who the person was. But a lot of people have it in their mind that um, the Roland uh, boy is the person that killed him. But it's another T.Y. His last name is Sanders. I just put it out there, actually. Um, T.Y. Sanders is the person that a lot of people need to look into. So um, a lot of people have it in their head as far as like why did Kanika switch her plans around as far as not going to the movie theater Monifa of course convinced her to come to the hotel and a lot of people are aware that T.Y. Rowland was actually present at the movie theater that night the reason why he was present at the movie theater that night is because they were going to get Kanika there um, but it was too much of a public area for them to actually carry out the plan there. So what's your plan? What's your plan is what to get her to come to the hotel. Which she did go to the hotel. And um, I don't necessarily know what happened in the hotel, but had Irene not went live that night, Kanika's death would have been swept under the rug. So Irene automatically, she's not even a person of interest because her party was used as a scapegoat for this whole plan to be carried out. Um, Monifa and Shamaya were definitely the last two people to see her alive. Now, there was a lot of people at the hotel that night that a lot of us aren't, aren't even aware of. They had a second room on the floor. Um, pretty much Kanika was gang stalked. There's this definition called gang stalk where um, if you're like a snitch, if you steal some money from the wrong people, pretty much the streets of Chicago, they set out hits for you. They put money on your head. And Kanika had money on her head because of her witnessing LaQuisha. I don't know if I'm saying her, right, her name right. LaQuisha Holmes getting gunned down. And she went back to Monifa and let her know Monifa went back to the Rowling brothers and told them. And I don't know if a lot of you all know that um, the Rowling brothers, their father's name is Charles Nesbitt. And he's actually a, um, a Mason. How do I know these things? I know these things because I'm from Chicago. I've been following the case um, since 2017. I've just never publicized anything that I found out because I've been in fear of, you know, just being stalked myself. But it's kind of like 
is way heavy on my heart. And after seeing that MTV episode, I just felt the need to come out about it. Back to what I was going to say, um, Charles Nesbitt, you can look this up. You all could do the research. The name is correct. Their father's name, the Rollins brother's name, father's name is Charles Nesbitt. He's the one who actually ordered the hit out on Kanika. Um, if anybody knows anything about Charles, he's actually a high-ranking Mason. Now, if you know anything about Masons, they need to be fucked with. They're not to be fucked with. They know people everywhere. Um, if you guys know anything about Teresa, Teresa is an Eastern star. And that is the reason why a lot of the confusion came about where she switched her stories up a lot due to the fact that she's an uh, Eastern star. She had to move a little bit differently. Her boyfriend, uh, his name is James Coleman. Um, her boyfriend at the time, he was also a Mason. And he happened to be very close friends with Charles Nesbitt. So what does it sound like to you all? A setup at its best. Um, if anybody knows uh, the Coleman guy, he left Teresa after Kanika's passing. But pretty much what I'm trying to get to is this. Uh, unfortunately, Kanika witnessed a death. She trusted her friend, Monika. She went back to Monika, let her know about this death that she witnessed and his was ordered to be out of her head. Now, as far as the hotel's involvement, um, the hotel was definitely involved. Uh, if anybody knows of the name Frank Marquez, any of the names that I'm dropping on you all, you all could look these names up, YouTube it, the information is out there for you all. Um, Frank Markell is the guy who was in the kitchen um, when the mother came down to view the body. He was a cor coroner. He was not a coroner. If anybody knows anything about Frank Markell, Frank Markell is actually a worker for a har organ harvesting uh, facility um, that has some associations with the Rosemont place. So pretty much how did Frank Markell get in the picture? Okay, so going back to the Rowland's father, uh, what is his name? Uh, Charles Nesbitt. Charles Nesbitt worked on a lot of um, construction projects for the Rosemont area, and I believe he actually helped with some uh, construction projects with the Crown Plaza Hotel. So he's automatically tied in with the people there. Um, the footage that was released to us as far as seeing Kanika 